All right, let's do it. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, whatever, you, whenever you are joining us, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good whatever. Glad you're here. Doesn't matter what time it is. Uh, welcome to the stream and welcome to the channel. I'm Eric. Uh, I am the uh, founder of Checker Liar Pictures and a cinematographer, director, photographer, editor, anything with a camera, any type of storytelling. I'm your man. And uh, yeah, that's uh, what, welcome to the channel. That's what we're gonna we're gonna talk about all of it. We usually do. Um, so, hello, Shelby Lynn. Oh, he's te Texas, well represented. Um, so, today we're going to be doing uh, the the stream that I've been, kind of been threatening to do for a long time. Um, it's a... We're going to start... Instead of starting in Lightroom today, we're going to start in... Uh, just with the, the photos straight out of my camera. And I'm going to talk about my selection process as I choose... Um, uh, choose which photos go into Lightroom, and then we'll drop some into Lightroom, and we'll edit a couple. Um, but today is more is going to be a little more freeform, a little bit less, a, a little bit less detail oriented in terms of making specific editing adjustments, and in terms of more uh, artistic, how do the, how do the photos make you feel, kind of thing, um, and which is an essential part of the process. It's a part that if I <laughs> I say I do these streams to bring light to the post processing world because there is so much. Uh, that that happens there that doesn't get discussed this is even uh this is even less talked about the idea of uh of yes yeah, seeing the raw images before they actually get edited um so yeah so that's what we're doing today we're gonna go through that and it's gonna be a be a different type of thing we'll see how see how it goes if you guys like it let me know uh maybe i'll do more of it um but i keep i've always said i wanted to do something like this so uh, as always, this is as much of an open forum as I can possibly make it. Please feel free to comment, share, ask questions, you know, give feedback. Uh, Shelby Lynn, I know you're absolutely going to have, going to have thoughts on some of these photos. So by all means, advocate for the photos you like. Um, and, uh, if you are a photographer, an artist of any kind, if you spend part of your day creating and you have work that you would like to share, please, by all means, drop it in the chat so we can all see it. Uh, we want to support as many art artists as we can. Um, and speaking of, if you want to support me and the work that I do, um, obviously, like, share, subscribe. It's always good to see that. Eventually, we'll make it to the point where we can monetize this. Um, but for now, the best way to do it is to go to my website, which is erichackler.com uh, slash photography, if you're talking for talking photos. Um, and from there, you can go to my portfolio, you can go to my Etsy store, you can order prints from me. Uh, that is the best way to support me and to keep me uh, able to keep doing this work. Um, and we also still have postcards, which are like still of all like all the prints I've got. Uh, the I love the I love that these are these are still like my favorite products that uh, we have. So yeah, they're available if you want to buy a set of them. Um, they all have a QR code on them, so you can scan that and uh, add your postcard, or your recipient can scan it and add their postcard to the map. And they're some of my favorite places in the world, and it's cool that I. You know, get to share these with people, and also they get to then connect with other people, which is the whole purpose of art, is to connect us and together make a better world. So, hello, Stephanie! Uh, uh, and by extension, Evelyn and Mia, who... I still know what you did. I'm just letting you know. Uh, okay, but with that said, um, and Shelby Lynn, wonderful. Questions, questions from you, questions from friends. Uh, we accept all of them on this channel. All right, that being said, we are going to jump not into Lightroom, but just into Photo Viewer. Uh, or just whatever, whatever I guess, we, I guess Windows just calls this Photos. Uh, yeah, so let me go ahead and pull up the, here we go. So these are the photos that we're going to be looking at. There's uh, 360 of them, starting out from, uh, from a shoot I did yesterday at the uh, John J. Radcliffe Conservation Area down on the Appomattox River. Um... And yeah, so we're gonna look at all of these. There's an old, uh, there's a thing I've heard that says it's never, you know, like it's not wrong to take a bad photo, it's only wrong to share one. So I am 100% doing that now. 
But we're starting with 360. We'll see what we get down to by the end of this as we start clicking through photos. And I guarantee most of these I'm not going to like. That's just how it goes. Uh, when I go out to take photos, and this is something I think every photographer should hear, um, when when you go when you're out taking photos, think of it. Don't think of it as trying to create a perfect finished photo. Think of it as like you're as if you're doing a sketch. You know, it's a rough it's a rough sketch. You're trying to see if the pieces come together to uh, to to eventually make something something different. Um, so yeah, these are a lot of these are me trying out ideas. Some of them work, some of them don't. So here we go. All right, uh, this one. This one I don't like. <laughs> I'm gonna tap through because there's a few, like there's, there's gonna be several in the same sort of vein, and I can look through them. I don't love I don't love this one. I like this better. This is a better representation of what I was trying to do with this. Um, let's see. Not that I couldn't zoom in on this and crop it in and make something similar. In fact, I might keep it just for that reason. Um, but I don't like this shadow up here. It's it's direct, distracting from the silhouette of the tree. Uh, so gonna keep it for now. But this is a better representation of what I what I want that photo to be. So I'll probably apply the same effects to both and see what I get. Um, uh, what got me into photography? Good question. Um, I kind of stumbled into it in a weird backwards way because I started out making movies. Um, at least in terms of me picking up a camera. Yeah, I started out making movies. And I shot film for several years, and then uh, I was working on a film shoot. Uh, I was working on a film shoot doing long exposures. Uh, it was a long exposure sequence, um, and that got me interested in doing that. And I started doing long exposures and light painting uh, with a camera, and that kind of got me into photography because I realized I really liked being out in nature just by myself peacefully. Um, so. Yeah, uh, that was, that's what got me into it. Was like, I, I came at it from cinematography and making movies and then switched to, uh, and then kind of fell into photography that way. Um, so, Shubblin, you asked what's going on with the sky. This is not the sky, believe it or not. This is a big wall of, uh, uh, I'm happy to be Evelyn's favorite tographer. Tographer? Tographer. I like that. Tographer. I've seen people use photog as the shortened version. Forget that. Tographer. It's all about it. Um, anyway, yeah, so this is actually, this is on the side of a big, uh, so not water, it's a, it's like a dam. I'm not sure exactly what the word is. It's a, it's a, there's a water processing plant kind of nearby. So this is a, a big sheet of water that's coming down. So it's actually not the sky, and that's pretty cool. That's what I like about this photo, uh, or about this, and gives it gives me the option for these cool silhouettes. So keeping this one, because it might turn into this one. This photo, this one's really busy. This one's very busy. I don't love it. I like the next one better, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Um, all right, this one, I like it. I don't like this corner up here, but I can crop that in. Let's see. That's a better version of it. Um, right now I'm looking at the whites and seeing if I've still got the detail. I've got a good amount of detail. Let's see, okay. Gonna keep that for now, because I might have some fun with the texture. Loving this one. This one I'm a big fan of. This one here is an accident, because uh, <laughs> that's that's what accidents are for. Um, the I'll show you what I want this photo to be in a second. There it is. Uh, this is what I wanted that photo to be. I wanted to focus on the on the wall of water with the kind of shadow of the tree branch in front. What I got was my camera autofocus to the tree branch instead. So I'm gonna delete this one. It's actually it's a nice black and white. Honestly, I might keep it because it might be interesting to rotate. This is a better version. This is a better version of that. This, th they're accomplishing different things. I'm gonna keep this, but this is a better version um, because it's got the the texture of the water behind it. Um, my camera settings for these. Okay, um, I will be able to tell you more of that once we get into Lightroom and once we start looking at the photos because Lightroom will actually tell me and I'll be honest, I don't 100% remember. Um, my ISO was set at 400, which is kind of what I keep my ISO at unless there's a reason to change it. Um, and I was on a long lens here, so I was probably shooting, my f-stop was probably around somewhere in the 5 or 6 range, and then my shutter speed was, I want to say, up in the 400 range, just because I'm compensating for sunlight, but that's my guess, we'll be able to tell, uh, later on. Um, if it helps, uh, to think, if you're, if you're thinking about settings, um, uh, but if you think about 
Shovel in, you're finding letters in my photos again, and I love it. Um, also want A up at the top here. Um, but if you, like, camera settings are, is, for me, oh, there's the R. Is that the R you're talking about up there? We have an AR. See what other letters we can find in this. I'll spend a whole day doing this, honestly. Um, if you think about, if you're, if you're working on photography, um, like, yeah, use camera settings as a, as a thing to practice with, but your, your better options to learn what the camera settings do specifically, and then make those adjustments, uh, based on what you want the photo to be rather than, um, uh, rather than trying to Im imitate settings because everything is going to be different and settings are a huge way that you as a photographer can express your vision. So like here, these two photos, very, very similar. Uh, this one has a, let's see. Um, oh, there's the R. I see it now. I got a couple of R's. This is a pirate photo now. It's an R. Anyway, uh, so the difference between these two. Uh, this one, I think, has a high, this one's probably got a higher aperture, higher f-stop than this one does because you can see more. Like here, the branch is going to be, it's pretty much in focus in both. Like you've got, you can see the branch, you know, fairly well in both of these. Um, maybe it's a little, a little bit sharper here. Yeah, it's a little bit sharper here. Maybe the focus point was just a little bit different, but, uh, yeah, this is a different, either a different focus point or higher f-stop because you can see more, you can see the water behind it. Okay, so keeping that, I like that. Um, this one we've shifted over a little bit. I don't think I like it as much. I like this one, I like this one better. This one, I, you know what? I'm keeping this, this has kind of a waterfall effect I might be able to pull something out of. I'm much more exacting deleting photos when there aren't people watching. Don't like this one. This one's too noisy. This one's got too much going on back there. It doesn't, it's not, it's not as clean as I want it to be. That can go away. That one's cool. Now this is, here's the difference. This one is a higher f-stop uh, than the next one. Like these two are the same, are photos of the same thing. This one's a high, and in both, you've kind of got the, the water in focus, or at least detailed enough that you can see it. But at a higher f-stop, um, you've got more... Like these branches are not quite out of focus enough to come across as shadows. I don't like it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of this one. This is the photo I want because this is those branches. This isn't shadows of the branches. This is the branches just that far out of focus. Um, that just so far out of focus that they appear like shadows. I like that phenomena. I like the thing there, the pattern they sort of do. It's got a weird sort of triangular poly, uh, polygonal look. Probably gonna rotate this photo 90 degrees. I like this one a lot. This one's a, is a cool thing. We had a lot of fun water texture photos here. Let's see. Okay. So this one, I really like. This one, not as much. I was experimenting with trying to get a little of the, the bottom of the waterfall down there. I don't know if I accomplished it in a way that I can express well. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Uh, same thing here. Okay, let's talk about this. Um, uh, F-stop is how open or closed your, cam your, uh, your aperture is. Um... I don't think I've got a manual lens around that I can show, but basically the higher your f-stop, the smaller the aperture, the hole in the aperture, so the kind of less light you're letting in, but by doing that, you are lengthening your depth of field so you can see, so more things can be in focus. Um, if I jump ahead real quick down toward the end here, where's the photo I'm thinking of? Did a bunch of photos of this water at the end of the day, which we'll talk about. Where are these photos? Come on, where are those out of focus ones? I'm somewhere in the beginning of it. There it is. Okay, so a photo like this, which we're gonna get to, um, which I am gonna delete for reasons, but like a photo like this, even though uh, <clears throat> a photo like this, even though we are, you know, like it's overexposed and this needs work, but like everything's pretty much in focus. If you zoom in, like we've got the plants there. If you go back to the trees back there. You can still tell indistinct, distinct trees and and leaves. If you come into the closer stuff, like the water down here, it's all in focus. That's a high f stop. That's that's deep depth of field. If I go to this next photo, theoretically, I got to zoom all the way out. Then I can go. To, I go to something like this, which is just the leaves on this branch. That's a lower f stop. It's a wider aperture and it's a much shallower depth of field. So this is the same river that we just saw in the previous photo. Um, come on, you got to zoom all the way out so you can yeah. So this, yeah, this river here, and this white blob back here, it's the same same body of water, just different f-stop. So that's the difference, that's that's f-stop and aperture uh, in a very, very small nutshell. Okay, we were here. 
Uh, yes, this is even this is not super. Do I have any from that are all the way out on a, on a long on a wider lens? I think down at the end of the day I went back. Let's see. So something, yeah, something like this. Yep. So this is end of the day, much darker. There's something we're gonna. This might be editable. I might do something with it. But like this is this is how far back I was, um, give or take. I think I was actually a little closer. I might have been over here. But yeah, so this is this is on a, wi a much wider lens, uh, whereas the yeah the early ones I was much closer, uh, and on a, on a much longer lens. We're gonna talk about that. There's a lot of photos today on a long lens, uh, partially because uh, I liked shooting on a long lens that day, and partially because my wide lens or my main wide lens uh, stopped working. So there were frustrating moments. There always are. Anyway, let's look at this one. Um, I love what this is going for. Let me see. Uh, so, here's an interesting thing about black and white. I was going to bring this up. That's a better photo. Um, I think I was going to bring up. We're going to get rid of this one. Um, I think I was going to bring up. These photos are not in black and white. Uh, this is this is a feature if you're shooting raw on your camera. Um, if you're shooting JPEGs, shoot in color, convert to black and white. Uh, shooting raw, that like this... Um, these are all these are CR2 images, which is Canon's raw form, at least for my camera. Um, they're black and white on here. When I uh, when I import them in the Lightroom, I will be able to do to do color versions if I want to. Uh, so, yeah, we will. Um, there there are some of these that I'm definitely going to be doing in color, uh, and I took for color. But I like to I like to you know shooting them this way. It means it's black and white on my camera when I look at it. When I'm look, through, when I'm you know looking through the through the at the screen to try to pick a, to set up a shot, um, and being in black and white, like if I if I see something, I notice the color and I love the color. Okay, cool. I know I want to photograph this color and capture this color, but then if I if I'm still shooting with my camera showing black and white, it means all right, color. I know I'm gonna get, but now I can focus on just the composition and the contrast and the the elements that color might distract me from. So, yeah, that's why these are, uh, yeah, these are not, so these photos, they look black and white, we're gonna choose them in black and white, and then in, in Lightroom, we're gonna go into, and we're gonna convert them to color. Um, that's kinda make sure I get the best of both worlds. All right, so we liked that, I like this, this is better, I've got the, pretty much the majority of the tree free of the shadow of this thing. Um, Cause I really like the silhouette of the tree against the, against the waterfall. And also the foreground here. I don't love that branch kind of sticking in, so maybe we'll, we're going to come back to a couple of these. I kept trying to. That's better. Okay, so yeah. These vertical ones. Yeah, um, maybe. Oh, there we go. There's a good one. Okay, so vertical ones are going away. Uh, it really depends. Sometimes I do both. It, de it depends on if it strikes me in both. Um, if I like it in black and white, but the color, I, I'm not, you know, the color isn't doing anything for me, I'll just do black and white. Um, if I like both, uh, I will do both. Yeah, a lot of times I'll, sh I'll you know shoot it in color and then switch to black and white because I like it later. A lot of times it surprises me how good the black and white is. This one's okay. There's something about this photo that I like. There's a lot that I don't. Just gonna keep it for now. Um, let's see. These do get better. Okay, let's back up. Okay. So that one, no tree branch in the way. Better. Worse. Better. Okay, so we're gonna delete that because I like the tree being as centered as possible. This one might be able to work with. There's going to be some interesting cropping going on. Um, okay. This is... Oh, Cormorant that was flying. Just thought I'd try to catch it. Didn't do a great job. Photos of uh, some of the water and the sun glinting off it. I got better photos of that coming up, so let's delete that. Same thing. Tree branch in the foreground. Don't love it. Delete that. Love this. This is the photo I wanted to take. Absolutely love it. Can crop in. Can get really nice... I think that means I probably have a vertical version. I do. Beautiful. This is this is the photo I wanted to take, and this is the photo I worked my way up to. Um, which means I can now go back and say, okay, that's not as good. That's not as good. That's not as good. I got the wide like this, and I got the vertical like that. So, and that's the thing. Is it like uh, typically when I think about stuff like this, I think about I use something called the refining process, um, which is just kind of a way of like. Take a photo, look at it. What do I like? What do I not like? So it's never it's never perfect, and that's one of the things I wanted to do this particular stream for, is because 
like looking at this, you know, we can, you know, if, if I just jump into Lightroom and say, hey, this is the photo we're going to edit, the assumption might be, um, the assumption might be that, uh, this is, that this is the only photo I took and that I just nailed it on the first try. And that's never true. Um, it's always a process. It's always try. It's not, it's not never true. It's usually not true. The majority of the time I work on photos like this, um, what you see with me editing in Lightroom are the best of the best as opposed to being the ones that I seeing the ones I deleted. So I wanted to do this for that reason. And we were fine. We try, we get better. We try, we get better. Sometimes it's change settings. Sometimes it's move. It's all kinds of different things. Um, to get photos of water that aren't messy and blurry, you want to up your shutter speed. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, coming up because I, I did. I had to do that a couple times. All right, so I like these photos. I like both of these. These are like that one's better composed, I think. This one's brighter, which might mean more information. I'm going to keep both in for now. There we go. That looks phenomenal. Beautiful keeping that. Let's see. Okay. So now, here are the hard decisions where I got to go between the two. Um, let's see. Uh, Let's see. Um, which of these do I like? I'll answer questions in one sec. I just want to figure this out. This is this is what my refining process looks like a lot of the time. Just sitting here going back and forth, like which one do I like more? But for tiny de details, I have to fix the horizon on that one. It's a little bit better. Yeah, I'm going with that one. This one's a little bit off center, but I can correct it, and I've got a little more waterfall there to work with. Um. It really, it really changes. Um, usually, in terms of getting how many it takes for me to get the right shot and how do I get the shot with moving things, um, it usually takes me. Really happy with that. At the beginning of the day, it's usually I'm warming up. Beginning of the shoot, I'm usually warming up, so there's usually a lot more mistakes. Um, Shoveling, I'm gonna straighten it. I'm not gonna let it. I'm not gonna let it leave it tilted. But here's the thing. Look at it now. Only in only in reference to the straighter one do you notice this one's the off center one. I think by itself you don't notice, but I'm gonna correct it anyway. Um, but anyway, yeah. So usually at the beginning of the day, there's a lot more that I delete, a lot more that don't totally work. Um, okay, I like both of these. I think I like this one a little better. I'm gonna keep both for now. Let's see, that one looks a little bit. Yeah, there's there's some water. We'll talk about that in a sec. Sorry, uh, Gage. I'm, I keep trying to answer this question and then getting distracted by the photos. Give me one sec. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Gage, nobody's perfect. It's part of the fun, honestly. Like, if we were all perfect, we'd all be the same, and then we'd all be taking the same photographs, and nothing would be interesting. Uh, okay. Yeah, something about that third one just isn't... It's, it's kind of right in between the two and in the wrong way. Um, uh, Shelby Lynn, this is still not true. Uh... I, I adore both of you, but still not true. Um, but anyway, yeah. So so it takes usually. Yeah, so usually it varies how many times it takes to get the right one. You'll see. You'll see later on. I think there's some photos where it's like I got one. I'm like that's it. Um, but it depends. Um, getting the shot with things that are moving is honestly luck. I tend to take more photos of things that are moving just because I want to you know try to find different you know let the camera find different things and just try the timing. But Part of the other part, the other part of it is that, like, especially with nature, is the fact that things move and change is one of the things that's beautiful about it. Here's some water. We're going to talk about this, but yeah, the fact that things move and change was one of the things that makes nature beautiful, and that, and so, and that makes makes a photo like this. That I, I like this photo. Yeah, see, Shavlin, I told you, um, I love this photo, and this is a photo not just like I could come back pretty much any day and get this photograph because this one, like, the tree will be there, the water will likely still be coming down. Um, doesn't matter. You guys are all still wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, looking at this, this is always changing. Like the, like, I think I do it. No, I didn't do another one. We'll come back to that. But like, if I took multiple photos of this spot, they would all be different. And so that makes this photo, not just, not just a photo of a place, but a photo of a moment. And that's really cool. Like, that's a great, that's a, that's a, that's a wonderful thing about photography. So yeah, you just keep you just keep going until you find something that that connects with you. Um, and if it doesn't if it, if it doesn't connect, take another photo. Like you got you know kind of as you take photos and practice and change little details. Uh, yeah. Oh man, shooting animals, animal animal photography is is is, is like a real challenge there. Um, and with that, it's high shutter speed. 
Uh, anything moving, if you want it crisp and clean, you want a high shutter speed. In this case, this photo, we'll see when I get it into Lightroom, but this one is a very high shutter speed, which is why you've got all this. I'm, I'm pointing at a screen. You can't see what I'm pointing at. I need to use the mouse. Like this area down here, really crisp, really in focus. It's still the water is, you know, it still has that little bit of that movement, but the light is just gorgeous. Um, this is also a shallow depth of field because this is in focus and good, and this and back here it's blurry, but that actually contributes really nicely. So. Uh, so yeah, high shutter speeds for anything for animals. Um, there are ways to fix blurry animals in post. Um, depends how blurry, and usually they're expensive. Uh, unfortunately, there are a couple of programs that if you want to pay for, uh, which I mean I don't have them. I don't pay for I, I don't pay for them because I'm not. If I was doing primarily wildlife photography, I might. Um, also, some more expensive cameras are have some really good autofocus that helps that helps with that but um yeah in post it's hard to do and usually uh usually what to do with with animals is either wait for them to stop moving um or go with a high shutter speed and you can most cameras you can set to if you hold the shutter down it'll take a bunch of photos very quickly um there should be a feature on your camera probably called drive that's what that is you and, and you can hold the hold the shutter button down it'll just click 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 um and you get higher chances of something being being in focus there um so yeah it's one of the i mean it's one of the reasons nature photographers tend to like you know they go out and they you know they they hide somewhere in nature and they sit there for a very long time till the animals sort of get comfortable with them and then they can take photographs and uh the animals are a little more they're not running around they're a little slower um and they're a little more calm, and so you can get better photos of them. Or get really long lenses. That's the other way. Okay, another photo of water. I like it. I don't love it. I think I did better. Am I just... I just kept turning and taking more photos of this tree. <laughs> Jeez, I just kept... Okay. Those look identical. I don't know which they like better. I'm going to put these in Lightroom and compare them. And that's the other thing. Is I don't always... I, sometimes I have to get stuff in Lightroom to, to see how they look. Okay. So, yeah, here we go. That looks fine. I like that photo. I like that one a lot. A couple different versions of these same similar photos. I'm going to come back to that. Okay, more water. Uh, I'm sitting here being like, I, I, emotionally, I've already processed these. Let's move on to something else. <laughs> more water. Okay, here we go. Here's a discussion of... Okay, hang on. Let me go back a sec. Get rid of this. I've got a better version of it. Uh... I do. I would love to be an, age, an animal photographer, specifically. Um, like, I would love to do some of some of that stuff. Um, I've done some of it. You're going to see later on. I've got some got some great animal photos from this day. Um, yeah, I would love to do that kind of thing. Um, that, yeah, just hasn't hasn't been hasn't been an opportunity I've I've chased after yet. But like, when there are animals around, yeah, you bet. I I will sit there and take photographs of them for hours. Okay. I'm gonna keep this one so far. I don't like it as much as the other one. I think the I think a better uh, this is a photo where the other photo. I go back. This one benefits from a shallower depth of field, so it's just this moment, and everything else kind of can be a little out of focus. Um, uh, this one I think would be better with a deeper depth of field where you could see everything. I don't hate it. I'm gonna stick with it because I do like the contrast. There's something we can play with, but not yet. This is better. This feels like it's got a subject. It's got that spot there. But I've got the rock in the foreground. Let's get rid of that. Uh, did a couple shots here of this little the ripple in the water. I like that. I'm going to keep it for now. Not sure what I was thinking with this photo. Yeah, get rid of that. I like this one. This one's good. That one's better. More interesting water. Get rid of it. I like this. I like the contrast here. I might crop out the, the upper portion and just kind of get the bottom stuff, but I really like it. Uh... Ooh, I'm liking that even better. That's see, that's refining process. I look at this photo and go, ah, I wish I I, I want to focus more on the stuff in the bottom, and then I took a photo that did. Um, though I lose a little focus. This one depth of field's a little bit wider, so you've got a little more of this detail. Whereas here, that's a thing that's a little blurrier. But I'm gonna keep both. I like both. That's interesting. Yeah, big fan of both of these. They're very weird. They're very interesting. We're gonna keep that. That's okay. I think there's a better, something about these isn't connecting with me right now, it's compared to the other photos. It's a little more interesting. Nah. Alright, this one, 
That's cool. I like that. I can crop it. I can crop. I'm trying to get rid of the, like the the concrete stuff in the background and just focus on the the tree silhouettes with the water behind them. This photo will be a great example of that. Um. Uh, I just, oh there we go. We got a bird in the shot. What is that? Looks small. Looks like a. Not sure. It's big enough to not be like a sparrow or something, but it's. Not sure. Maybe a cardinal. Yeah. Cardinal blue jay size. Um. I kind of, for the most part, I let the photos sort of tell me what I want to see. Um, sometimes I'll look at, I'll look at this and be like, okay, I know I want, I want the, I want the main, the center of this photo. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, get a little bit extra, so I can have some freedom to crop it in how I want. But for the most part, it's just like I look at a photo, I'm like, all right, what do I want? What do I want to emphasize in that photo? And I crop it to match. Um, honestly, I don't like the bird in this photo. I think the bird is a distraction. We're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna go with this one. This one's better. That one's also better. That's the same photo without the bird. We're gonna go with that. A little darker, which means higher depth of field, uh, or higher shutter speed. Probably depth of field. I think I got a little more detail in there, which probably depth of field. Keep that. There we go. Two different versions. I like the one with more water better. Uh, I see what you mean. It almost looks like the almost looks like the the crease on the page. That little guy. Eh. Maybe. Hard silhouette. Kind of gives me a scary stories to tell in the dark sort of vibe. I'm going to keep that for now. Water texture. One of my favorite types of photos to take that nobody ever wants. <laughs> like, everybody I show photos like this to is like, oh, that's really cool. But it's never something that sells. It's never something that really gets accepted because everyone wants big landscapes and stuff. This is just, this is just peaceful. This is, shots like this are the kind of water you, you, can, you, can, you can hear this photo, which I love. You can hear kind of the babbling stream and the water rushing across the rocks. And I love the way light go hits things when it goes through water. Did a couple of those. I like this one better than this. I'm going to keep that one for now. I was playing with intentionally being out of focus because I liked the I liked the, just the the, shat, the the color of the light. I'm going to keep this cuz I want to experiment with it. I love this one. This one looks like a painting. This one looks this one looks like a you know, postmodern Jackson Pollock type of nonsense. I'm all about it. Uh, is that a leaf? I think that's a leaf in the middle of this shot. That is. Okay, we're gonna keep that. That might be a photo I want to do with some color. Do with color. That one is good. That one is. Um. I don't know. I'm gonna keep both for now. A little water small. Uh, a little further down the path. I like this one because it's a. I like the light coming through, and I like the Z sort of formation we get. I guess it's more of. A, yeah, it's a Z. Bit of a Zorro vibe going on. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, absolutely. 100%. There are so many days where I've taken photos and, and and gone back and been like, nope, this is none of these work. I, was, I wasn't feeling it. The one thing that I find helps with this, um, if you can, is when you go out into nature... Don't touch your camera first for a while. Actually, this is this is my second time going back to this place this week. I went there earlier in the week uh, just for a hike, and I was enamored with it, and I decided, I decided to come back with the camera. But usually if I go to a new place to take photos, I'll spend the first give or take hour, um, you know, obviously dependent upon conditions and wildlife and so on. But, like, I try to spend some time without the camera out so that I can spend – I can take that time to just connect with nature and connect with what's there. Um, and so by the time I'm ready to take my camera out, I've got an idea of what things here I think would make beautiful photographs. Um, and that helps, but there are definitely days where I take photos and I hate all of them. That's 100% true. Uh, and there have been days where I've sat down and been like, all right, I took 500 photos. Let's go through them. And I go through, and I'm like, okay, so I'm keeping 10. Like, and that's fine. Um, you know, you think about the majority of, you know, photographs. I mean, all right, I took 360 photographs on this one day. Um you narrow that down to like if that's if that's average for all the places I go real quick just to show you like here's all the locations I shoot in Virginia some of these folders have multiple thing have multiple other folders in them because I've been there more than once um so like there's tons and tons and tons of photos and of my Virginia photos that I've been pub that have been published like on my website or on um uh published on my website or on my Etsy store, like, maybe there's five 
maybe 10 or 15 at the most. So, yeah, there's tons of times where the majority of my photos don't get shown. Um, I'm sorry about the delay. Uh, we, like, I guess Shelby Lynn or, you know, to anyone else, uh, if you want to, if you if you ever have direct questions you want to ask me not on a live stream or you don't want to deal with the delay, um, you can always reach out to me uh, if you go to my website, if you go to erichackler.com, there's a contact form there and we can email um, and we can connect that way. Um, but yeah, I'm always happy to, to have conversations uh, not on stream, though it's fun to do it on stream because I get to uh, get to share photos at the same time. Anyway, uh, yeah, so this, so let's see, photos. This one, let's see, what do I got out of this? I'm going to click through all of the ones here. All right, that's a surprise. We're going to come back to that bird. We're going to spend a lot of time with that heron. Um, okay. Don't love this. I'll be totally honest. I don't love most of these. I honestly, I didn't like a lot of these little waterfall photos I took this that morning. No, none of these are speaking to me. This one maybe. That first one is kind of the only one. That one's a little too out of focus. I was trying to get the water to be a little smoother. Don't don't love it. Really don't like how this one looks. Nope. Zoomed in. Didn't love it. Didn't work. Okay. So there we go. One photo, maybe that I'm, I might not edit. Let's talk birds. Let's talk about this great blue heron that was just being all kinds of phenomenal. We became best friends. Um, that's not true. He ran away from me twice. Um, but yeah, let's take a, let's take a look at this great blue heron shot uh, that I got. Um, yeah, really had a good time with him. There's, in these photos, I'm definitely going to do a color version of because I really like the... Uh, like this, this is kind of a field of wheat almost. Not wheat, it's it's like marsh grass, but it's yellow. Um, in the foreground, and he's blue, and the water's bluer, and so there's a lot, a lot of cool details we can we're gonna play with here in color. Playing with focus, maybe might use that. That's better. That'll be good if I crop that in a little bit. Uh, always checking focus. That one looks a little looks a little soft. I'm gonna go ahead and let's see. That one looks sharper. Let's go ahead and delete this one. I like this. Yeah, focus looks good. I know a couple of these were really soft. I think that one may... I'm going to save some of these and figure them out in post. Uh, I figure them in Lightroom. I like this one. I think this will be a fun one to kind of do a, almost a vertical version of where you get the rock, the heron, and then the grass in foreground. That'll be cool. That one's nice with the rock behind him. Head's turning a little bit. Don't know how I feel about it. Oh, there we go. Head definitely looking right at me couple of these let's see how's the focus there I'm always checking the eyes a little bit soft and oh that one's that one's gorgeous that one's nice and crisp that's that's got layers I love this photo this photo is keep me is a keeper how's this one nope blurry um nope, no delete delete the blurry photos let's check this and part of this is just me not liking that the you know when he looks a certain way the light hits his eye and I really like that all right uh, Here's him in a secondary location. Um, it's all right. It doesn't do as much, but I could zoom in on it. Oh, I can zoom in on on it that way. Yeah, let's get rid of this. This one's not doing anything for me. That one's okay. Him looking away is kind of cool. Slightly better each time. Yeah, let's get the, let's get the centered one. And there we go. The knee's looking, and that's great. Uh, don't need that one. These two. A little more centered there. Let's get rid of this. All right, here he is in another spot. And like usually my first photo of anything is a practice photo. I don't like this. This, this, this there's no interesting composition here. Th the, these are better going to be better, so I'm going to get rid of that. That weird, that cool head tilt. As he's trying to as he's looking at something. I really like that. You don't don't usually see herons from that angle. I'm going to keep that. You see them from this angle. That looks great. Same deal. Uh, I like having a little more room on him. Let's get rid of that. Darken it up. Uh, probably shutter speed. Not sure. Maybe maybe f-stop. Yeah, probably it was actually probably f-stop because I usually do. Let's see. Oh yeah, you can see more detail in the background now. Yep. I use, I go back and forth on shooting animals with a with a high or low aperture. There he is flying. Did I actually get him in focus there? That's not bad. That's actually really difficult to do. And that's not bad at all. I'm gonna keep these and check them in Lightroom. Um, not usually in terms of getting animals to look at me. Um partially I mean for a couple reasons one the main one being I don't want to disturb them like I'm 
you know, I'm in their habitat, I'm visiting them, and I want to, and like, to me, they're, they're most beautiful when they are, I love this photo, by the way, a little bit of cropping, this is going to be perfect, um, they're at their most beautiful when they're doing their thing uninterrupted by humanity, so I try not to get them to look at me, if they do look at me, like, you better believe I'm going to take advantage, and I'm going to take photos, um, but yeah, I usually don't try to get them to look at me, uh, unless it's like, you know, a photo of someone, like, if I'm doing, like, yeah, photos of someone's dog or something, where the, that's the goal, um, let's see, hey, herons are great, herons are a lot of fun to take photos of, they're majestic, they're gorgeous, and they're, they're usually, they spend a lot of time being very still, so you can, you can take good photos of them, um, turtle, Honestly, the turtles are more active than the heron was in terms of moving, because most of the turtles, you get anywhere near them, and they're going to plop off their logs and into the water. This guy, this guy hung around. He let me get some shots of him. Uh, which, shall we lend you'll appreciate, because uh, it was Thursday. Uh, let's see. I remember liking how the light was landing on his shell. I think I'm going to keep that one and get rid of this one. I think I overexposed a little bit. Heron again, we'll come back to that. Hardest animal to take photos of. Um, that is a that's a really hard question because they, they're different in different ways. Um Usually birds in flight. Because usually the hardest thing to take the hardest animal to get photos of is the ones that are always moving, and birds in flight, it's really hard to get them in focus and sharp. That's usually the the biggest I think I think that's if if you want to be like show photos of animals and say which one was the hardest you know the you know hardest photo to take probably probably flying birds um uh and then just the speed at which they fly that's the other thing is herons tend to fl have these big majestic like s leisurely kind of kind of flight where something like a like a falcon um or like a sparrow they tend to be more you know, tend to be faster or twitchier um but, yeah. The other thing about getting animals to look at you is if they don't know you're there and you spook them, then they run away. Because that happened to me last night. There was a there was a beaver that I almost got a photo of, and then I, like, it heard me adjusting, like, my, my camera settings and uh, s did not know I was there, and it ran away real fast. I am overthinking these turtle photos. I mostly took them because the heron was out of shot. I'm, <laughs> at the moment at least, artistically kind of over turtles. Let's see. Okay, delete that one. Okay, back to heron. Out of focus. I don't love the background. This is just where the heron was, so I was practicing, but I don't love the background here. I like that pose. I might keep that one. Hey, a little bit of water. Let's, do some, let's have some fun with some water. <laughs> Humans are certainly the least cooperative. That's definitely true. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, I'm gonna do something with that. This is again lo very long lens, zoomed in very tight on the water. There we go. Up oh, here we go. Let's get some some really nice contrast and here's some really nice sharp water. Yeah, these are gonna be fun. Shelby Lynn, you're gonna love these. Uh, cool. All right. Okay. This is. This one I might keep. There's a bunch. Oh, look at that eye. That's gorgeous. Yeah, I'm going to keep this one. There's there's something about this photo that I really like. Um, in, terms of, in terms of sorting through these, yeah, I'm going to keep... I don't love that one as much. I like this one better. I really love that one. But I like both of these, so we're going to keep them both. Heron looks good. There you go. Heron flying. Heron flying. Out of focus. Turtle sitting on, on rock. Closer to focus. But we're going to delete that. Look that as well. Look that. Here we go. Okay. So I love these. I love this. These are farther away, so I'm gonna have to zoom them in. But this heron went and perched on this rock, um, and stayed there for the majority of the rest of the time I was out there. But because of the way the light was coming through the trees, it almost put a spotlight on him. Um, and so we're gonna have a lot of fun with his photos. I'm gonna keep that for now. That one's all right. Head's not in the light, and it's a little bit out of focus. So let's go ahead and delete that. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Look at that. Light coming through. Interesting angle on him. Keep that for now. Here we go. Look at that. Some nice dappled light. on. Oh, it's a little soft. Okay. We're going to pull back. I took tons of photos of this guy. That one better? 
That's better. Look at that. That's sharp. I even caught some. Had some light in his eyes. That's amazing. Yeah, I love. And if I darken these up really nicely and just kind of let him be this this gorgeous white centerpiece, it's gonna be phenomenal. I like that. Uh, <laughs> like that. I like that one. All right. That one not as much. That one's awesome. That's classic. A little too bright. All right. Turtles hanging out on a rock. Just doing turtle stuff. Again, kind of over turtles right now. A little bit of water coming through. I don't know what that one was. I'm going to delete that for now. This one, just a rock with leaves on it. I'm going to keep that. There might be a color reason to keep it. Uh, let's see. Don't love that. This little waterfall, like, I was right next to a dam, and it was cool, but I'm not I'm not loving a lot of the, the those. All right, so let's go with some wider shots here. Okay. That's okay. I like that better. I like that as well. Actually, hang on. I like... I actually like both of these pretty much, though. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. So this one... That one. Let's delete that. I like this one or this one. I'm going to go with the wider one. I can crop in if I need to, I think. Um, I'm going to keep both. Uh, got this little tuft of grass in the foreground. I thought that was cool with the cloud there. You can barely see it with the cloud there. Um, so, actually, you know what? This gives me an example. Give me a second. Let me grab my camera bag. Okay, so this is the camera bag that I usually take with me uh, on on photo excursions. Um, let me try to hold it up a little bit. There we go, to sort of show what's on camera. We'll talk about what's in it. Um, most of the stuff in here is, is just the camera and lenses. Um, I've got a few different cables. I've got a few other little, little gadgets, and um, I'll talk about them. I also usually bring a tripod with me. Sometimes it stays in the car. Sometimes I carry it. Um, today I had it with me. Um, Let's see. Okay, so got a camera, got uh, right now I've got a, I've got a got a wide lens. Um, I got a portrait lens with me just in case I'm decided to do portrait photos uh, if I meet people or something. Uh, my camera has a has a has a zoom lens on it, and then I've got this guy, which is the yeah zoom lens that is ridiculous. But I keep that with me. That's good for wildlife. Um, got a charger and an extra battery. Uh, this is a remote trigger that I use sometimes, especially if I'm, if I'm doing if I'm doing long exposures or I'm doing shots where I where I don't want to touch the don't want to touch the shutter because I'm afraid I might shake the camera. Like if it's on a tripod, um, I will use this. Um, I've got a little brush for cleaning off the uh, cleaning off the lenses. Um, got a set of filters which I sometimes use. Sorry about that. Like, just a set of filters for, for some of my lenses um, that I can use if it's if I want to darken it up a little bit or if I want to do really long exposures. Um, got a blower, which also just blows out some air to blow dust off lenses if there's anything there. Um, and that's pretty much it. I've got a couple different things. I've got a bunch of like, you know, a bunch of backup like lens caps and stuff. Uh, and I've got this. Got my. This is a this is this is the fancy thing. I got I've got a like tri lens holder that if I if I don't have the backpack with me, I can clip this onto my belt, um, and then attach lenses to it. And I can just carry all my lenses, but usually that kind of stays in the bag. Um, yeah, that's what I bring with me usually, uh, depending on depending on where I'm going. I'm gonna zip this up real quick so it might be loud. <laughs> yep. Uh. uh yeah, and then I will have, um, let's see, on this side I've got a lens clip, or a clip for my lens caps, um, and usually I will either have, I'll, like, I'll bring a journal with me, or a notebook if I'm gonna write stuff down, not exactly gear, and then I'll have, I'll have water and a couple of snacks, like, you know, granola bars and stuff. Hang on. So yeah, that's the gear I usually bring with me, but, uh, I always... I always want to stress that it's the, it's the, it's, it's your eye and the, uh, like the, you know, the, the gear you have re for the most part doesn't dictate how good of a photo you take. It might dictate what specific, 
uh, might dictate what specific photo you take. Like in terms of like if you have a certain wide lens or a long lens, like that's a thing. But it doesn't dictate the quality. Um, the best way, the they said the be- the best camera to shoot photos with is the camera you have on you. It's very much true. Um, and I mean, some of my favorite photos I've ever taken I took with my cell phone. So gear is don't never get hung up on gear. Never get never ever get hung up on gear. Take you know go out there make photographs of what you have. Um, and if you get to the point of really needing something new and you know you need something new, then you then you can get something new. But don't. It's the best thing to do is to practice with what you have, hundred um, percent. I pretty much only buy new gear when there is a type of photography that I want to do that I can't do, and, I, and buying something, buying a new lens or something will actually change my ability. It's like will give me the ability to make photographs that I couldn't before. But I mean, yeah, no, the, like the the pho- photographs I took that first got me into photography. Um, actually, here. Like, this is a photo of the Grand Canyon that I took. That is, like, one of my favorite photographs I've ever taken. Um, I took this with the lens that came with my camera. Uh, it really... The gear you have matters a lot less than the camera you... Than, than the... Than your... The gear and the camera you have matter a lot less than just your eye and your ability to, to, to find images when you're out in nature. So, anyway, we were looking at... We were looking at this. Okay. So this is a little tough to grasp. Um, I do actually, I do end up taking photos on my phone. Um, ooh, I like that. I'm going to, I'm going to go through these photos real quick and then I will answer that question. Cause the answer is definitely yes. Uh, okay. Let's see a little more clouds. Delete that too much sky. Flip side too much water. Um, that's probably the better of the two. Yeah, I think that's the better of the two. We're going to get rid of that. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I do take photos on my phone. I actually, I do. I've got a little thing going on my phone right now where I try to take more or less like one photo a day, like just with no editing, just to, you know, just like set it to one to one, like the Instagram aspect ratio, and just take, yeah, take one photo a day with, you know, I don't edit them, I don't do anything. It's just to, just literally, just to practice. If I don't have all those toys, can I still make a good photograph? Um, so yeah. Um, Absolutely, I take pictures just on my phone. It's a, it's a wonderful way to practice getting better at stuff, and it's a wonderful way to keep me from getting, from, keep me from thinking the only reason I can take good photographs is because of the gear that I have. Because it's not true. Like, it's, you know, it's you as a storyteller and you as a, you know, your eye as a photographer that matters so much more than than what camera you're using. I like this, especially getting once I get this into Lightroom, we can darken up the clouds there. I really like how this photo looks. Uh, so we're going to keep that. Ooh, there's a better version, I think. Closer. I'm going to keep both for now. Um, don't like that foreground. Really don't like that foreground. I'm going to keep this. This one was a mistake, but I'm going to keep it because I think it's fun. Um, I don't know about that one. That one's a little weird. I'm going to keep it for now. Uh, that's tilted. I don't like that. Okay. That's good. I like that one. Uh, I like the I like the more sky one a little bit more. I think, yeah. Let's get rid of that. Okay. This is just a cool shot of the area. I like this. This is warming up for another photo, so I'm gonna keep that for now. Here we go. Now I'm, I'm I looked at this. I'm like, all right, what do I wanna What do I see in this area that I wanna highlight? And the answer was this tree and the rocks. Those are my favorite things in this photograph. So, and delete that one. Actually, take it back. I want that one. Hang on a second. Let me let me fix that. Please hold. You guys can still hear me. Sometimes I have to have to dive into the recycle bin uh, to to get a photo back if I delete it by accident. There we go. Wow, I have not. I need to empty the recycle bin. It's been a while since I've done that. Okay, where's that last photo? There it is. Restore that one. Cool. All right, close that down. Uh, all right, let's get back into back into here. Where did we leave off? We left off here. Cool, and we're back. Um, all right, cool. So yeah, so I like so I'm gonna keep this. I like it. I'm not, not sure it's one I'm gonna edit, but I like it as a photo. 
These are going to get better. Here we go. Okay. So, I think I like the darker one better. The brighter one's a little bit, I don't know. It's enough that I can brighten it. Tree's actually a little more centered there. Let's delete that and keep this one. Same kind of thing. These are almost the exact same framing. Just like the other one better. There we go. Keep that. Okay, cool. I was the sun went behind a cloud and I was taking pictures of it. So, because you get some nice rays coming off there. A little bit of a lens flare. Ooh, that's better. That's really cool. Delete this. Keep that. Here's our heron hanging out in his spotlight again. That's overexposed. Let's get rid of that. Delete that. I like this. I like the water in the foreground leading us to him. And he is beautifully in focus, which is great. Even more... Now he's more centered, so keep that. This one looks a little bit blurry. And I was right, it is. That's a good one. Moving around, slightly different angle of him. Um, meh. He's hi kind of hiding behind a tree branch. I might keep this and see what I can do with it. Now, with it, when he sticks his head up, he's definitely hiding behind a tree branch. I was hoping he'd look the other direction, but he never did. I might keep this for my own per personal purposes. That's okay. Uh, um, uh, my choice. Literally, the answer to what makes the photos I pick the best ones is literally just which, which ones I connect with the most, which ones I like the most. Um, I don't love that. And that can be for any number of reasons why I connect with one versus or, or not with another. Here we go, Shelby Lynn. Here's some water ones. Um, yeah, it just it really comes down to do I connect with the photo? Um, you know, and there's certain things where I can say, okay, like I like most of this, but I got to change one thing or I got to like I look at this photo and I love the middle of this. I love the way the I love the water. I love the weird sort of warped reflections of the trees above. I love it. I'm gonna crop out this top part, like. I can say that, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna focus on this center section. But yeah, no, it's, it really, it just, it's just coming down. It's knowing what you like, it's knowing what you connect with, and just trusting your, yeah. You, know, you look at your photos and you listen to your heart and see what you like. So I like this. Um, I like this one less. I'm gonna keep it, but I like this one less. I want to get all these into, into Lightroom and play with them because these, this is the kind of photo that really can reveal itself. I like that. Focus is a little bit not where I want it. Focus is a little more down here versus I'd rather it be up here. But again, talking about taking photos of things that are moving, you take photos. These are photos of moments. So just consecutive to send that I don't like that one. I do like this one. This one's got a nice painterly quality to it. Same with that one. That one's interesting. Not my favorite. Love that. I think it's out of focus, but I love it. <laughs> uh, did a couple of these. Okay. That one's better. Get rid of that. In this case, I'm looking at composition. I'm looking. Oh, I love that one. Oh my god, I love that. And just looking at like, in this case, I'm looking at like all the, the just the way the light and the dark interacts with each other and seeing like here they're all kind of closer to each other and that has a nice feels like converging. I love that. I'm a huge fan of that photo. Maybe this one looks has a, like a stacking sort of quality to it. Look at these things are all on top of each other. I'm gonna see how that looks when I get it into Lightroom. I like that one a lot. Cool, those are some water photos. Now we're gonna do some, some again, not wheat, but looks like wheat. A uh, couple of these that were just sort of, I was trying to get the reflections. I'm gonna keep both of these because I wanna see what they look like in Lightroom, same with this. That one I don't like as much. Uh, let's see, well, I wanna use the last one in this group because I like the, I like the tree rising out of the wheat. Again, still not wheat, I still think it's cool. On the way back, here's another little water small. Uh, that I'm gonna grab some shot. I grab some shots of. And I'm, I'm gonna click through. I did a bunch of these. I'm gonna click through all of them. Because okay, yeah. That's what we can already say I was. I started refining it and finding what I wanted to be in focus. And I was fighting with the focus on this one to get it exactly right. Man, those. Some of these are good though. Some of these are really nice. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna work our way backwards. I like that one. I like that one, it's centered. That one's a little bit to the side, but I'm gonna keep it for now. That one almost, almost like you're looking under the water. We're gonna keep that. Not that one, for some reason. That one doesn't connect. That one does, I like that. I wanna see that one in color. That one's out of focus. Also out of focus. I like that, I don't love this one. Nope, that one doesn't do anything for me. Nope. 
Still nope. And back to the tree. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we kept a bunch. Six. Jeez, we kept a bunch of them. Okay, cool. I like those. I'll drop them into Lightroom and I'll see which one ends up being my favorite. Or multiple. Might have multiple favorites. Uh, absolutely my mood affects the photos I take. 100% my mood affects the photos. And so in some ways, and in, in some ways that's a good thing. Um, because if you're, these are a, going to be a panorama. I took three shots and that's it. Um, in some ways, like, you know, the, good photographs in some ways. In the photo, what they focus on and what the, and the story the photograph tells, tells you about the person who took it. And so looking at these photos, uh, I don't like these. This is more interesting. A little bit. I'm going to save this one just to play with it. That's just black. I was playing with my lens. That's overexposed. Keep going. That's kind of cool. I like the lines. We're going to have a lot of fun with the shadows of trees coming up. But anyway, so yeah, no, your mood definitely affects. And your mood, like, in some, in some ways, that's not a bad thing. Um, because it, uh, yeah, in some ways, it's, like, it's, it's a reflection of how you felt at the time. And that's, like, I mean, that's true of any artist. You know, there's a... <laughs> There's a quote from Ryan Johnson who says, I don't think anybody ever writes a screenplay until they're mad enough about something. And how, like, you know, it's the, and, you know, you can look back on the work that you do, whether you're taking photos or writing books or making movies um, or painting paintings, and look back and go, man, I just, I was, I was angry at something then, or I was, you know, I, I did this work when I was in a bad place, um, or when I was feeling great. Like, the work we, may, we do when we're feeling amazing is different than the work we do when we're feeling bad. Um, and that's okay. Like that's that's part of being of being an artist and, and taking photo or, you know making photographs and doing art. Um, that having been said, that's also one of the reasons that I try to like spend some time in nature before I start taking photos um, everywhere I go because that way it gives me time to you know let my whatever I'm feeling about the rest of the world settle and I can just be I can just connect with nature and react to how I'm feeling and react to how I'm feeling in nature. So, but yeah, the mood definitely affects, and that's not a bad thing. Um, okay, I like that one better than that one, so we're gonna get rid of that. That's not doing anything for me. That one either. Still no. I did a bunch of these. This is, I was mad about right now. I can, I know I was, when I was taking these photos, I was not happy. Um, I do like that one. I don't like that one as much. I don't even know what I'm focusing on there. Don't like it. Nope. Real nope. Okay. Here we go. Uh, different thing. But yeah, like I like this one. It's the only one in this in this little series I like. I'm probably not gonna do much with it anyway. But yeah, no, the Um Yeah, no, I was like I said, like I said, one of my one of my lenses kind of stopped working when I was out there. Um and so yeah, I was not I was not happy. I was in a I was in a bad place when I was taking a lot of these photos. So there's a lot of here that I'm like, nope, don't like it. I wasn't connected. Um, okay, so this is, I have always wanted, and these photos are definitely going to get edited in color. I, I'm probably going to do a black and white version of some of them, but these are going to be, these are color photos. Wait, when you see them in color, you'll understand. Um, but I've always, I, I was struck by just the trees out here and just the, the pattern they make. I was like, all right, I've got to, I've got to do something to, to capture this. So I did a bunch of these and I'm kind of loath to go through too many, to edit too many of them or to delete too many of them. I do not like this branch off to the side here. Uh, there we go, lens flares, um, which I worked to correct. We'll talk about that. Um, okay, so let's see where we're starting. Uh, yeah, it's a similar kind of thing. Um, usually, when I get overwhelmed by by the day to day, my, my by my day to day life. And I need to go out in nature and just go out by myself. Um, go out by myself and just reconnect with things that are beautiful. Um, yeah. Now, usually when I'm feeling stressed or when I'm feeling overwhelmed or when I feel like there's just so much going on, that's when I'll go out and, you know, I try, I try to make myself do it at least once a week because it's a good habit to be in of taking time to, to recenter yourself every week. But... Yeah, no, it makes me feel centered and peaceful as well. And it's that's one of the reasons I love it, is I can just go out there and 
be myself and let the rest of the world go away and all there is is just me and nature and nature demands my attention uh, okay i'm gonna have to i'm gonna wait to see some of these in color hey overexposed let's see um mm, i'm still on the fence i want to you know I'm, I'm gonna have to see these in color i want th these are gonna be color photographs almost definitely um i like this one a little more than this one let's get rid of that uh man i wish i did this every single day uh <laughs> i don't um i divide my time between doing this and also making movies and also sometimes, sometimes i'm shooting movies sometimes i'm editing movies kind of the same way i do with photos but i'll do it i'll be putting a movie together instead um sometimes i'm you know spending all day emailing people and reaching out and trying to get you know new jobs new photography jobs or, or video jobs so it's a uh, yeah, sadly I don't get to do this every day, so it makes the times I do do it special. Okay, let's see, let's see, is that, that's not too bad actually, okay. This, too much of a lens flare, don't like it, I like this better. A little bit of a lens flare there, um, nah, I prefer not to have that. Same deal, I like this, I'm liking the, the depth and complexity that you get in these trees, I'm gonna have some fun with this. Um. The one thing none of these photos really have is a subject, other than just the trees themselves. And so I'm gonna see if I, I think, I think as I went, I got, I started picking out certain trees to be my subject. But I like them. I like the lines and the shadows I'm getting. Uh, yeah, I think I like the wider version of this. Brighter version, good. That's fun. I think it's overexposed in the sky, but we'll see if we can fix that. That's overexposed. Get rid of that. Here we go. Now we're starting to get. All right, delete that. There we go. Now I've made it. Now I've made this tree my subject. And all the other trees are kind of around it. That works better. Um, let's see. Yeah, I like that one better. I like the, I like the ones a little bit off. Um, that being said, I like this one better than that one. Ooh, okay, you know what? Lens flare. Let's keep both. But that feels weird. Oh, and also, is that is that a focus? A little bit, it's a little blurry. Okay, let's get rid of that. All right, let's see, quick check, see what my phone's making noise about. Uh, let's see. All right, let's see. I'm almost through these, and then we'll start doing, doing some editing. Um, let's see. Okay, we're gonna delete that one. We can't. We've come full circle now. Uh, of these two, they're kind of identical. I think I like that one a little bit better. Yeah, okay. This one, had some fun with focus. That's out of focus. That's in focus, we'll keep that. That's also, that's in focus and better. Uh, I'm just gonna keep most of these and go through them in, po in Lightroom. Trees and sunsets, very pretty. I'm still kind of fi figuring this one out. All right, you know what? I've got a ton more photos to go through. Let me go ahead. Let's see. Yeah, there's a bunch more. Okay. Hey, some more water. Forgot I did that. Uh, so I edit in. Uh, there we go. Getting darker and darker. Have some fun with these. Okay, there's a bunch of photos left. Okay, but all right. So even so, we started with 360, and even ha even though we haven't finished, we still have how many photos do we still have to go through. If I come back to about here. Um, so we start with 360. We're already down to 233. Um, and we still have 112 to sort through. And these are not all getting selected. So uh, I'm realizing I want to do some editing on this stream. So let's go ahead and do some of that. Uh, yeah. Um, we'll come back and do some more of these. All right. Let me go ahead and throw the, the be right back sign up and go ahead and get get at least the first half of these imported into Lightroom um, and while I wait for that to load and that to happen I can answer some questions um, so let's see um, so for editing uh, for editing I use I use Adobe Lightroom um, which you're about to see uh, and Adobe Lightroom is like um i like it um i know a lot of people use photoshop that's it, it again same same way with the cameras and lenses it the the artistic process of, of editing photos matters matters less than 
It matters more than the, the program you use. But, uh, yeah, I use Adobe Lightroom. It's what I like. Most... There, I know there are free alternatives to to it. I will, if if people are interested, let me know, and I can see if I can find find out what some of those are. Because there are there are free programs, and I hate Adobe's subscription service. Like, it's it's ridiculous. It is absurd that we've let them get away with that. So, um, let's see. Let's uncheck all of these. Let's zoom them out. Let me start here. Sorry, I'm just talking to myself as I get these photos selected for import. We're going to go to, I'm just going to come back. I'm going to go to here. Let's check all those. Let's import. Um, so, okay. So, yeah. So, that's the program I use. Um, uh, I, in terms of do I prefer close-up shots to far-out ones, um, it's really, let's go to develop. Um, actually, let's go back to the library real quick. Uh, so, in terms of, yeah, do I prefer close-up shots to far-out ones, it really depends on uh yeah it really depends on okay i can jump back into here all right so now we're in lightroom and i've imported the photos we've talked about um yeah in terms of close up to versus far out um it depends on the photo it depends on the subject and like you know some like i'm a big fan of connecting everything to the environment and to like the world around it so in that case i like the far out ones because you can usually see more but sometimes like you know you just want to focus on a thing or sometimes you don't need to be super close you know Someone's being close up lets you see more of the world in that way and see these are turning into color as we as we talk because you'll see what yeah be able to see what they look like in color. Um, sometimes yeah, seeing the world, uh, see, yeah, seeing things in close is can still can can show you details that you never notice and connect you more to the world that way. So it's it's really dependent. It really depends on on the on the subject and on my mood so, and yeah. Um, my favorite part of the process, um, I don't really, I'm not sure I have it. It depends on the day. It really changes. Sometimes I love editing and I love sitting here and going through the photos with you guys. Um, sometimes I love being out there by myself and just taking, you know, finding stuff and taking photos. Sometimes I like just using photography as an excuse to sit in nature and not do anything. Like that's also kind of nice to have. Um, so yeah, really depends. Um, Hardest type of photo to edit. Every, you can ask a million photographers. They're all going to give you different answers in terms of hardest type of photo to edit. Um, I don't know. It, it like I'm not sure I have, I have an, an actual answer to that because it, it, it really depends on the photograph. Some photos I look at, I'm like, okay, I want to do... The, the hardest photos to edit are the ones where you see a whole lot of potential in them. Um, those are the ones that I think are hardest to edit because you want to make it perfect and you, you, you just go through every detail. Uh, let's see what I want to start with. You know what? This one was catching my eye. Let's bring this one up. All right. Um, so yeah, those are the, in terms of hardest to edit, how I pick what to submit. I, I look at photos and I, I see which ones talk to me the most. I see which ones connect with me. I usually ask, ask people which ones, what, which ones they like if I'm not sure, but usually it's just, I look at a photo and I go, this one, this one speaks to me. And something about this, either I, you know, I like the lighting, I like the way, uh, the way, just, if I look at a photo and it makes me feel something, that, I know that's a photo that, that's worth submitting. Um, it's usually, it's more, it's more in here than it is up here. Um, the first place I got a photo published, um, I think of, uh, I mean, in, like, if Instagram counts, I had a bunch of photos featured, um, <laughs> that's a dangerous question about what my favorite photo is. Sorry, I know this is weirdly delayed, so I'm responding to things you asked a while ago. But yeah, first place I got a photo published, I think, was Instagram. Um, not counting like my own websites. But then I got a, I got some stuff published in magazines. Um, some of my some of my uh, Alaska photos. Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, Adobe Lightroom. I'm not gonna say it's the best. It, it's it's your preference. It, the best the best editing software is the software you are that you connect with the most. I like Lightroom. All right, let's start. Let's play with some sliders while I talk. All right, so clarity. I'm a big fan of turning up the clarity and really getting some nice like sharpness and stuff. I really like this. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a second copy of this one because I am gonna do a black and white version. I'm gonna do one of each. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go. Back. I'm gonna do that separately. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're going to do the color one first, and then I'm going to create a virtual copy. Let's get rid of that uh, for now. 
I want to do I want to do the I want to do some edits first and then come back to it. Um Yeah, so Lightroom is just it's it's my preference, it's what I like, but uh really depends on the photographer and depends on how what you what you connect with and what you find easiest to use. Um my favorite photo constantly recycles. Uh and honestly a lot of times my favorite photos are not for the same reasons. Um like this photo of the Grand Canyon, I love it. Um like I love this photo, but one of the reasons I really love it is because of that it was a photo I took when I was camping with my dad. And that night, and that was like, he wanted to show me this awesome place, and we got to see it, and there was a rainbow, and it was like, yeah, that's, again, it's it's more in here than it is up here. Um, in terms of how I get the motivation to go out, there are some days where I don't. There are some days where I don't have the motivation, and I just don't go out, but really, what I can do is I can look at some of the photos I've taken. Look at the photos you've taken that you like. When you have no motivation, look at those photos, and remember what it felt like. No, don't, don't look at them and go, oh, they're pretty. Look at them and remember what it felt like to take them. And that will probably be what what you need to get get you out of bed or to get you moving. Okay, let's see. Um, usually, uh, favorite place to take photos in the world is Iceland. Uh, just every part of that country is gorgeous and I love every part of it. So yeah, I will, Iceland's my favorite. I don't think I need to crop this. I really love this the way this photo is just composed. Maybe I'm actually going to go up a little bit just to get that rock out of the foreground. Like this tiny little sliver of rock down here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. I'm going to go up to there. But yeah, that's, which I think if I just go to an 11 by 17, yeah, pretty much already there. can pull this, pull it out to there. Perfect. 11 by 17 will work if I come in. There we go. Good. Perfect. Um, so yeah, no, Iceland is amazing. Uh, Glacier Bay up in Alaska, Zion National Park in Utah, Antelope Canyon actually, Antelope Canyon in uh, I'm gonna show that photo real quick. Show one of those photos real quick. Antelope Canyon in Arizona um, is a place I would go back a million times because yeah, it's got stuff like this, which is just gorgeous. Um, yeah, Antelope Canyon. Uh, but yeah, no favorite place in the world is Iceland. No question. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go back down here to where we left off. Boom. Um, oh, we were asking, you were asking about settings earlier on some of these photos, something like this F 29. So very high F stop, very, very big depth of field. Uh, ISO 400, one sixtieth of a second. So stuff like that. Um, and you start editing just kind of, as you, uh, all right, so uh, this photo, by the way, settings-wise, F13, so still a good depth of field, but not everything, uh, but my shutter speed was one was one six hundred and fortieth of a second, so much quicker shutter speed because I was capturing moving water. Um, there is so much to adjust. I usually start with clarity. I like that's my personal preference because I usually I usually start with the I usually start with the ones that do a lot more, like the like you know dehaze is a big one because if you like here's the thing if I adjust highlights all the way up and all the way down it's not it brightens up a certain area but it's not a huge change um, versus if I adjust dehaze which is a massive change to the photo so I usually start with the with the big ones clarity and dehaze and then from there um, uh, I, I I adjust but it's sometimes I look at a photo and go okay I know I need to to start with the whites. You start with the highlights and go from there. So it really depends. Um, sometimes I edit on my phone. Usually I like I like having the computer. I like having the desktop and, and really being able to sit here and dive into it. So that's, I don't do, like I do, I'll do editing on my phone if I need to, if I just need to get the photo out. But the other thing is I like shooting raw because you can do a lot more with it. And phones aren't great with handling raw photos because they're, big, they're bigger and more complicated files. Okay. Let's see. All right. So for this one, I think I want to bring the highlights back up a little bit. Actually, I want to bring them as high up as I can go before I start. Not even before I start clipping, because I don't really care about clipping too much. But let me see. Let's bring that back a bit. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, some of this is gonna is gonna overexpose. That's fine. I don't care. My, and some of them are underexposed. I got a really wide dynamic range on this photo. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 
Let's come down to these color sliders and play with them a little bit. I bring up the blues a little bit's a good idea. How are the aquas doing? They do anything? Nope, never. Seriously, the aquas are my are my great white whale. I want them to do stuff. Oranges, yeah. Let's bring up the oranges. I'm gonna. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to hue and I'm gonna shift the yellows toward orange a little bit because I like that. I like the idea of getting the, of the yellows in the water being kind of being the same color as the rocks and giving kind of a consistent color palette to this photo more or less. Let's see what else greens doing. Uh, here's the other thing about edit, about photo editing. Talk about it's been it's a lot. I sit here and I I like play with every single slider to see if they do anything. See if they make a big difference. And they don't really. Yeah, purples are sort of there. I'm gonna leave them leave them alone. Uh, yeah, leave them alone. Like I sit here and play with everything. Like really, I, I adjust and I just like even having done this for as long as I have. Okay, I like that. Note, here's a, here's an interesting thing to notice. Um, playing with the blue the blue luminance slider, so brightening up the color blue. If I brighten that, it brightens just all the little areas of blue in them, but it also has the effect of brightening the whole photo. Um, do oh absolutely. There's a bunch of times I've edited photos to be to be out of this world, um, and to be very very strange. Let me find uh, let me find an example. I mean, we just did one. A couple weeks ago, sort of. I go to the Browns Islands beginner class stuff. Um, yeah, we did this photo. Uh, it's not super out of this world, but yeah, did this one where we have the use the drops on the lens to kind of be a to be a strange sort of you know things in the sky. Um, where's my? All, let's see. There's also one that I did. Uh, so many so many photos in here. Been doing this a while. Um, okay, there's one. Yeah, uh, go to the Manus one collection. Is it in here? Yeah, yeah. Look at this photo. Like this is one. I mean, to be fair, the original. Can I see the original? I can see the original. I click on this. Like, uh, yeah. So that was the original, and then we did that. Too. I don't think I changed too many of the. Did I actually adjust the. I did. I actually I changed the tint on this because I wanted it to be purple. Yeah. So absolutely, well, yeah, we can edit photos to be out of this world. Um, just depends on what kind of photos you want to, what kind, yeah, what kind of stories you want to tell with your photos. Um, and there are times where it's like it's cool to be. Uh, there's a, there's a great quote um, that is says artists use lies to tell the truth, and so sometimes it's like sometimes it's like yeah, I want this photo to represent the real world. Sometimes it's like no, 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 the I I want to. Like, I want to focus on something. I want people to take a certain thing away from this photograph. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to adjust it in a way that's unrealistic because it, 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 in that way, it gets to a, to a deeper truth. And that is like, that's completely valid and a cool thing to do. Okay. These all look fine. Um, do I want to brighten up the oranges? The oranges? Yes. The yellows? N also, yes, because they're writing in different ways. Okay. <laughs> See, I surprised myself. I don't expect half of this. That adds more texture. I don't know. Nah, I want it bright. Yeah, I want I want a distinction between the light and the dark parts of this photograph. Reds, still not really having an effect. Purples, a bit of an effect. Not enough to really do much with. Aquas. Still not there. I, it makes me sad. Aqua's, Aqua's my like my favorite slider to play with. Cool. Yes, yeah, so this photo doesn't really need any masking. This photo I'm really happy with, just kind of across the board as is, at least right now. Usually what happens is I will crop a photo. Now I wonder what this look like as a 5x4. Just a thought. I'll bring that over like that. Now I like it less. Let's go back. Yeah, let's keep it like that. Oftentimes, I will start by cropping a photo, and then at the, the it'll be also be the last step of the process as I go back and adjust. Cool. I like that one. Let's give that three stars. Let's create a copy. Let's go to black and white, because we really we did really like this one in black and white. And this one, I want to bring the texture way up. Uh, that really depends on the photograph in terms of do I have a favorite thing to adjust. That's really that's very photo dependent. Um, 
I like D Hayes. I really do. D Hayes is a fun one that really, it, yeah, like I said, it's a it's a really big swing. Um, but I like it a lot of the time. I'm actually gonna pull pull it back on this photo a little bit because I want to have a little bit of that brightness and really have that that nice contrast there between the light and the dark. I'm gonna bring the blacks all the way down then because I can do that. Let's come down to color here. This time, this time I don't want to bring the blues up too much. Actually, darkening them a little bit is probably better, the better way to go because I want to keep that really have that nice divide between the the bright water, which is going to be yellow. We're going to bring that up. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I like this one. This one doesn't have. A, yep, cool. Um, answering questions. Let's see. Uh, is masking hard or easy? That depends on what you're trying to mask. Um, some photos, like, where's a good example that I can bring up real fast? Um, so, a, okay. So, I'm not going to do some masking on this, but this will be a good example. Uh, here we go. Give it a second to load. Gotcha. Um, so, this photo... Um, is if I was going to mask this, I might do like just a simple thing slowly, slowly loading all together. So, uh, <laughs> Lightroom's fighting me a little bit. Um, let's see. So yeah. So for this one, if I was going to, if I was going to do a mask here, I might do a linear mask, um, and just do something like this. And just kind of get the whole bottom of the photo and like if I want to make that more blue do that like that's I'm not gonna do it but that's like that's an easy mask and so masking in that case is easy other photos might require me to I go back to the beginning here you know a photo like this might require me to like try to mask out all the branches and that would be a much harder process so it really depends um, if masking is hard or easy um, but you don't all, don't always need it um, in terms of removing camera dust, uh, if it's st like first off, step one is make sure your lenses are clean. Um, step two is in Lightroom at least you have this little band aid up here in, up here in the middle of the it's called healing, and you can click that and you can just click on spot like if there's camera dust you know on your photo you can just click on it and it will remove it. Um, so yeah, uh, that's a that's a way to get rid of camera dust. Um, it's the best way to do it, honestly. If you, otherwise, just keep your lenses clean and keep your camera sensor clean. Um, here's that's a that's a gauge. The question about black and white sliders on color or black and, yeah color sliders on black and white photography is actually really interesting because it is a it's a strange phenomenon. I want to edit a photo of a bird. I want I want to get one of my heron photos in here. Um, let's do this one. This one's pretty straightforward. Pretty basic shot. Oh, hang on. I was like, you know what? Let's see. There's one that I said I really loved. Is it this one? No, it wasn't that one. It's this one. There's one where I had some, I had some nice. Oh, hey, it was one of these. Yeah, I think it was this one. Yeah, we're gonna work on this one. Okay. Um. So the interesting thing about color sliders in black and white, am I clipping? No, a little bit on the head, but that's fine. Okay. Yeah, so the cool thing about color sliders on black and white, 11 by 17, because I, like I like that as a good, it's a good vertical, um, is that even though, and you can technically, technically this goes back to, to black and white, even fi uh, f like film photography when you were developing, you know, by hand. Look at that eye. That is phenomenal. Okay. Um, step one, clarity. I want, some, I want, to, I want to get some, some detail in here. Um, texture for sure. I'm also gonna bring the. Let's see, is it the whites or the highlights? It's the highlights. It's the whites. Let's bring those whites down. Actually, oh, here's one I'm gonna mask. We're gonna talk about masking. Um, but even even in black and white, those colors are still there. Look at that guy. That's great. Um, yeah, even in black and white, those colors are still there. We're gonna change this crop. We're gonna crop up to here. I'm just gonna have something like that. There we go. I might actually bring this down to like that. That's actually really good. Okay, you know what? Four by five. Something like this. We're gonna go a little wider. Come down a bit. Perfect. Uh, lose that. Done. 
Um, but yeah, those colors are still there, and so you can still you're not a, you're adjusting brightness. So you're adjusting the 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 bright the brightness of each color in black and white. So it's still it's still a thing. It's still there. All right. So for masking on this one, I'm gonna select my subject, which hopefully will get me the heron. Might get me some of the rocks, but usually or some of the the grass. But usually this is pretty good when you have an animal. Like I said, pretty good. Got to get the end of the beak. Uh, so we're gonna add a brush. We'll pull this down. We're just gonna kind of brush this dude's beak on. So we got him. There we go. Uh, the rest of it looks good. Gonna get this extra section here. There we go. And then I'm gonna subtract with a brush and get rid of this stuff here because this stuff is not part of him. Good. There we go. So now I can do a duplicate and invert, so I'll get everything that's not him. We'll do another subtract subject just to make sure we definitely clear that out. Good, good, good. Back to my subtract brush. Zoom in. Uh, and just make sure we're not, not adjusting too much of the hair. And there's going to be some kind of overlap there, and that's fine. Up here. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, cool. I got a couple options here that I could do. I could oh, bring the clarity down a little bit. I want to see. I want what I want to do is I want to separate. Um, I want to separate him from the background and have him be a little sharper, even though he already is in focus. But I don't want to do it too much. Cause I don't want you to lose his presence there. So we're gonna do that. Um. Yeah, it took me a while to really to if using question about using the brushes if using the brushes is hard. It took me a little while to get to it and to, to really I dehaze this a bit. It's gonna pull the colors out really nicely. Let's do that. Um, ooh, bring the shadows up. Can I give me that? Give me a little more of the background there. I like that. Yeah. What do I have in here? That's underexposed. Nothing. That's phenomenal. Um. Bring the whites up, just brighten up the whole photo a little bit. And I'm gonna play with saturation in a second. Um, it takes a little bit while getting used to using the brushes, but kind of once you once your hand gets used to doing it, it becomes pretty easy. All right, let's come back to our our bird here because I need to bring bring those highlights and bring the whites down on him. Let's put the highlights back up. Nope, that didn't look good. If I dehaze him a little bit, no, nope, that's not doing what I want to do. Clarity. It's darkening the darks, but not really. Texture's a good idea. There we go. That's getting something. Let's see. Uh, I mean, like it's like with everything. It's just it takes it takes practice. Um, let's see. And then the, the hardest part of photo editing, I think a lot of the time, sometimes it's the masking, sometimes it's, a lot of the time it's just choosing what I want the photo to be. A lot of times, because there's so much, you know, I, I talk about all the time about like the, the importance of, of editing and photos and how, how much you can change, all the details you can change with it. And that's, that's the real thing. It's trying to choose what you want, how you want the photo to come across. Uh, saturation, I'm never getting those aquas. That's going to drive me nuts. Let's see, okay. Definitely bring the oranges up. I definitely like that. A, it brings up this, and B, it brightens up the the beak and the eye. We're gonna come back to the eye in a second. Oranges, yeah, we're gonna bring those up a little bit too. Reds, not really doing anything, not as much. Um, Lightroom, I, I like Lightroom on a computer a little better, but that's just because I, like, I kind of prefer the, for working on the computer um lightroom in on an ipad is actually really is really like intuitive like i enjoy i enjoy editing on, on my tablet so yeah um it's not so much like in terms of thing is it easier it's not so much easier because it's all it, it's all dependent on what you like so if you if you practice on a tablet and a tablet becomes the thing you're used to working with then the tablet is going to be the one that's easiest so it really depends on what, on what your preference is. Uh, 
You know what? This photo should be like this. This photo should look like this. Yes, this is better. This is much better. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna bring the saturation kind of down across the board. I think it's a little bit too much. Let's see, let's see the vibrance. No, oh yeah, actually, yeah, the vibrance is a little bit was a little bit hot. Let's pull that down a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna do some work on his eye because I'm always a big fan of doing editing on the eyes. Let's go 300%. Ooh, got to denoise some of that background. Let's do that real quick. Uh, background stuff. Remove noise. This is gonna. There we go. That's better. All right. Now I want to create a new mask. I'm gonna do this as a circle, and we're gonna get. Uh, I do not play Minecraft, but. I know people who do, and they love it, and it seems awesome. I'm just bad at gaming. Uh, I'm still playing games from like 20 years ago, so. Uh, but no, Minecraft is totally, totally cool, and uh, one day Shelby Lynn is going to make me play Minecraft, and that will be fun. So, uh, so I don't play Minecraft yet. All right. One thing I always like to do, I'm, I'm always a big fan of doing edits on eyes especially on animals because like we connect with them like eyes are the way we connect with we connect with people we look at you know they always, they always look someone in the eye to to understand them and so i think it's important that we are able to see animals and see their eyes and connect with not just not just with the animal but with the not just with oh that's an animal connect with like there's a soul inside that inside that bird or inside that otter or inside whatever so i think it's important to to edit eyes. That's the thing that I really try to do. There we go. Yeah, I think people notice. Cool. I think my photo's in good shape. I'm going to give it two, two stars. I might want to come back and revisit. Um, let's see. What's, a, what's one I can do that I haven't touched on yet? That would be fun. You know what? These water photos. I've been waiting to edit them forever. Let's do. Let's do one of them. One of the ones I've been so, super hyped to do, and it's taking time to load. But let's see. All right. Because it's loading all of them in color now, and we get to see what these photos look like in color, which is awesome. Uh, I'm actually curious what this one looks like. This one's that's almost black and white. Yeah, that's this photo's almost in black and white to begin with. Um, but let's come back to those. Let's come back to that water that water I was really connecting with and I want to edit uh, alright let's see I love the swirling colors here I really do where's that sh that was the one that was stacking this is the one that I felt like it was converging similar kind of thing okay which of these am I? do I love which of these do I really feel the most Can I, that one I think it's that one uh, man these are good they're weird. They're interesting. I love the texture of the water. It's awesome. Let's see. Yeah, we're going to work on this one. Okay. No, I want to black and white this. No, I want to do this one in color first. So. Yeah, clarity is going to be a... Clarity and texture are going to be huge on this one. This one is... I'm, I'm always a big one to add more texture to water, but yeah, this is going to be awesome that way. Um, uh, usually, so it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of print sizes you can do. Um, and a lot of the time, because a lot of my, my photos are just getting shared, either shared online or shared on my website, um, which is also online. Um, I will, I will do them as a, uh, <laughs> uh, get, <laughs> sorry, I just got your message about, <laughs> there's no way that I suck at gaming as much as Shelby Lynn does, uh, and, uh, that has yet to be tested, so I'll let you know how it goes, but anyway, um, my first crop is I crop the photo to, 
to like what I think best represents the photo. And sometimes that is like I can go to a standard size and say, okay, I think this is what this needs to be. Um, let's see. Some, but sometimes I'm just like, all right, let's go to the original. Let's just and let's just adjust it free form until I find what I what I want this photo to to, to be. Uh, oh, this one might be good. It's a one to one. Nah, it's gonna be a four to five. But nah, let's switch that. Uh, still like this. There we go. That's good. Um. All right. Uh, if you can't see the eyes, like that's. I mean, yeah, that's that's something that I like in my photography. So it's like if I if I take a shot and I'll check it and I don't see the eyes, I'll probably take another yeah you know, take another photograph. But if I can't see the eyes in a photo, like there's other things to edit. There's, maybe that photo isn't about that. It just really depends. Yeah, this photo is all about the, all about the contrast and the texture. This one's gonna be. I don't want to go. I don't want to go super high contrast on it. Like not ridiculous, but I want it to be. I want it to certainly be there. So yeah, we're gonna something like that. I think this one's gonna be one that's better in black and white, but we're gonna play with some colors as well. Cool. All right, that's a start. First thing I want to play with the tints. That's too far. Always be too far one way or the other, but I'm gonna I always like to see kind of what the middle ground of this looks like if I'm playing with the I'm gonna play with color. And then same deal with the greens. Purples. Nah, it's too it's too elaborate. We're gonna come down to this do it down here. Alright, green for sure. Bring that up. Yellow, we're gonna push to green. So we get that. Orange, we're gonna push more toward reddish a little bit. Just kind of turn this into a Christmas photo. Uh, green I'm gonna push toward blue. Actually, we're gonna leave that as is. We're gonna bring bring those oranges up, nice and bright. Uh, a little bit of red, not too much. Yellows, kind of are across the board. We can bring those up a little bit, and then blues are hanging out in the middle. And blue is where it's gonna be at for this one. There's a little bit of aqua. Hey, look at that. Let's bring the greens down. It's a little bit strong. Actually, the yellows I gotta bring down a little bit. It's, I don't know. Reds. Yeah, this is just this is just a rainbow of of like earth tones in the water, and that's phenomenal. Okay, I am gonna pull the actually. Hang on, if I push the purples toward blue and bring them up, that's gonna add a little more a little extra blue to the photo, which is good. That's what this photo can be about. Push the reds to orange. That's doing a little bit of something. Let's do that. Or not. Let's leave. Yeah, let's leave that in the middle. And the magentas, nah, not really having an effect. That's fine. And now we can talk luminance. If I want to bring up the blues, get the, yeah, there we go. Get those, get some nice, some real good highlights in there. Aquas, a little bit. Uh, might leave the rest of them more or less where they are, because I like that the blues are getting to to really shine. Aquas I want to bring up because the aquas have been pushed to blue, so, it's, so they're the similar color. Magentas, not really doing anything. They can stay where they are. We've kind of got a nice curve here. A lot of the times, I've said this before, when you're doing color when you're doing color sliders, you sort of want to, as much as you can, have like, for the most part, like sometimes it's it's okay to have some big, some big, you know, if the, if the colors in the photograph are very distinct, like if you have like a very blue water and then you've got like a very, you know, orange city and there's a distinct divide between the two. You can have them kind of going big swings opposite directions. But otherwise, with something like this where it's all about the blending of the colors and the blending of the water, um the like having a nice smooth curve to kind of the to your sliders is usually the easiest way to have that kind of come in nice and nice and smooth. This is like 50%. Yeah, this has a nice painter, painterly feel. You know what? I'm going to come up and dehaze, and dehaze this in the opposite direction. Nope, not dehaze. Put that back. Uh, I'm going to clarity this in the opposite direction, and we're going to end up with something that looks like a watercolor. Literally. That's awesome. We're going to do, do a bunch of versions of this. Um, oh, you absolutely end up st uh, sitting or laying in strange positions when you take photos. That's 100% true. <laughs> uh, ooh, yep. Yeah. 
I'm not a huge fan of always oversaturating, but that looks awesome. And I, let's say, yeah, that looks so good. Can I bring the blues up any more? I can. Yep. There we go. This is, this is chaos. Um, but I love it. Um, uh, yeah, so first question, yes, you end up in very weird positions when you take photographs. That's, like, par for the course, uh, especially if you want to get, especially, like, with animals, it's good to try to get low and kind of get, you know, on their eye level so you can connect with them a little better, so that's a thing, and, like, otherwise, yeah, it just depends. I, I like photos that are kind of low to the ground looking up, so, yeah. Um, some of the photos I took yesterday, I was kind of dangling over the edge of a bridge, a small bridge, like not a high bridge, but like I was, I was hanging over the edge, aiming, hanging, you know, holding the camera over, trying to get a shot low enough. So, yeah, you end up in strange places. Um, to explain the color sliders, so there's there's three sections here. But with in a color photograph, there's gonna be three sections: um, hue, saturation, and luminance. And basically, what those three are, hue is kind of the the color itself, and that's the one that like the color, like it's weird to say the color of the color. But like, so here, if we look at the blue, look at the blues in here. If I take the blue slider and I push it one direction, it's gonna go more toward purple. And if I go the other direction, it's gonna go more toward kind of a kind of an aqua green. So that's what the hue does. It kind of adjusts sort of the color of the color of each of the, each of the individual colors. Um, so that's what that that's what the hue does. Uh, and like, you're, it's it's not gonna go. It's gonna be between the two kind of extremes. So red is even though you know it's, you know at the beginning of the list, and magenta's at the bottom. Color is a wheel. So Red is on one, if I push the reds to one side, they're going to end up more magenta. If I go the other side, there's not a lot of red in this photo. It's basically between, red is between magenta and orange. Orange is between red and yellow. Yellow is between orange and green. Green is between yellow and blue, or yellow and aqua. Aqua is between green and blue, so on and so forth. So that's what the hue sliders do. Saturation is just how strong the color is. So if I, again, with the blue slider, if I take it down, if I pull it all the way out, turns the blue, turns anything the you know, we think that Lightroom thinks is blue to black and white, just takes all the color out of it. And then you can bring it up and make it brighter from what it's, you know, it started there, we pushed it to that. And then luminance, um, uh, luminance is, is the brightness of each color. So the blues, again, if I push them like that, they get brighter to white. If I go down here, they get darker. So that's what luminance does. Um, real quick, the way to do, uh, Gage, the real quick, the way to do black and white with just one thing in color is to, let me find a photograph that this will work on. I know you're on a deadline. Let me, let me see if I can find one. Actually, I can do it with this photo. If I was to take this photo and just pull every other slider down except for the blues, I'll keep the purples up because the purples, we turned, we pushed the blue with the hue slider. That's how you do it. You just actually really like that. Uh, but yeah, that's how you do it. You just pull the other sliders down. Um, and yeah, that's that's the way you would do that. Um, so Gage, you know you have to go, but thank you for thank you for joining. And you're always welcome to uh, reach out through Shelby Lynn and ask questions. Uh, you are also always welcome on other streams. I'd love to have you have you on whenever you want to be on. Um, in the meantime, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create two more copies of this. We're gonna do. I might. And I might end up doing a fourth one. We'll see. So we're gonna go here. This will probably be the photo I finish out the stream on because this is the photo I've been looking forward to. We're gonna bring the clarity down, uh, and we're gonna let this photo be, be all watercolory. I'm gonna keep the texture up because I like. I like the low clarity, high texture thing. I do enjoy that. I'm gonna bring the saturation back down because I think this is. This is kind of cooler if it looks like that. Dehaze. I'm gonna let sort of sit in there. I don't know. There's something kind of nice about it being, being lighter. Let's let's do that. Bring those highlights up a bit. Bring the blacks down just to get a little more of a deep, a little more of a, a little more contrast. Actually, might, might go over to shadows. Now nah, let's bring the blacks down. I want to darken more than just that. There we go. I'll also bring the shadows up a bit. There we go. That's kind of sweet. It's indefinable in a way, and I like that. Can I move this? That's all I got. Okay, cool. This one actually might be better as a full. Three by two, or do this side of the photo. I don't know. I like this one. I like it. I like it like that. That's great. Uh, so there's that, and then we're doing and then with the black and white version. Going back to the original. Uh, I do want this S shot. I want this to be the three by two. 
And here we're gonna be more we're gonna be more exacting. We're gonna be more severe with our colors because I want the whites up. I want everything else more down. And this is in black and white. You're mostly adjusting luminance. This photo is now is now all about contrast, so just gonna find those yeah, highlights still down. I want like, there's a reason to get I'm underexposing some of this. That's fine. Can I do this with shadows instead of blacks. That might actually be better. Nah, I need a little bit of blacks in there. Clipping some spots, that's fine. It's really texturing this up, and I really like that. I'm actually going to bring this down a little. That moves that. Bring this down a bit and make this photo more about the stuff in the center. There we go. Yeah, that's that's a piece that's coming together quite nicely. See, in this case, talked about wanting an even curve, and in this case, I want them to be, like, I want higher contrast between between the various colors. So, I, like, and this, is, this is luminance, this is brights and darks. Yeah, I want that higher, that higher contrast in there. Because it really, uh, yeah, it really, it brings out the detail. I like that a lot. I don't know what is. I don't even know what's in focus anymore. This is just a, yeah. This one's just, this one's just interesting. Yeah, it's got to look like that. That's the way to do it. Cool. So let's give all these a nice, nice three star rating. Gage, thank you for joining. I'm glad to have you. So, uh, hope you have a good rest of the day, and we'll see you next time. Uh, so yeah, that's what that's this one. And I'm really happy with it. There's some there's something kind of cool about the, the 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 black and white with just the blue. May come back and do a version of that. Not sure. Um I, was, I wonder what this low clarity one would look like with that. Not as good. I disagree. Let's put that back. Nope. Uh, edit. Redo. Set the ratings. There we go. Cool. All right. I think that's what we're going to end on for today. You know what? Actually, I want to do one of these. I was having fun with these this tree stuff out there. I want to I wanna end on one of these. Cool. Let's see. I kept going back. So let's see. Which one of these do I want to do? This is a different tree. Yes, that's a different tree. All right. So my tree options, I got this one, which I'll be cropping in. Or this one, which is kind of already cropped in. Or this one, which is more centered, but doesn't have the the length down there. One more balance, too. I'm going to crop that out. Let's go, you know, let's, let's do this one. This will be a, this will be a nice kind of closure. And in this case, I, I am going to crop specifically because I, I know exactly what I want this to be. And then I'll see if it fits a certain mold. But for now, yeah, I want it to look like this. Uh, kind of come back across like that, get a little more centered, just like that. Uh, so I'm missing anything here. Uh. <laughs> All right. Um. Let's see. This photo by itself is already kind of It's monochromatic. It's not it's not black and it's like it's not you know black and white yet. Like we will do a black and white version because it looks really good. But this is monochromatic already, so it's the only color that's really there are the oranges. Bring those shadows up is good. Blacks down a little bit. Yeah, there's something, I don't know, there's something haunting about this one. I don't know why. Something about this just captivates me. 
All right, let's come down to our colors, and I think there's there's definitely some blue in the water down there. Very little bit of blue, which is fine. We're gonna we're gonna get rid of that. In this case, we're gonna get rid of these colors, and we're gonna lean into the oranges. Let's see, orange, red. Now nah, red's not as, not as big of a thing. Yellows. Yellows aren't as good. Orange, oranges. This photo has a has a beautiful harshness to it. And I think I want to stick with just the oranges. And let the yellows kind of sit there. Ooh, there we go. Push the yellows toward orange. Now you're getting some reds. That's great. Let's do that. And if we pull, come down here and pull the yellows down. Ooh, no. Push the yellows up. Pull the oranges down a little bit. Get some. Get a little more contrast in there. It's gonna you know a little more. Yeah, something like that. A little bit less saturation. Um, you are more than welcome to do this, and as uh, anyone who wants to use one of my photos for for a poetic use or to as an inspiration, you are 100% more than welcome. Ooh, yeah, let's darken that up. Uh, just a little bit of that in there. That's good. Cool. All right. I feel like this photo needs to be a little bit. A little what I call sharper. Needs dehazing it a bit. Get a little more contrast in there, so I like that. And now I'm gonna, to compensate, I'm gonna bring these oranges a little bit back up here, and the yellows up all the way, so we don't. So it's not quite as dark down there. We can still use some of that. All right. Let's see what else we can do. This is, yeah. Um, texture's pretty much all the way up. I want to do a couple of things. First thing I want to do: talk about masks, linear gradient. Just to finish this out, I'm with the linear gradient here. Just get the water, just kind of like that. And this is mostly just going to up the texture, clarity, a little bit. Desaturate. Ooh, actually, if I push the saturation up a bit and then push it toward gold, even toward purple or green, no. There we go. That's that's what I want. Yeah, look at that. I love it. Uh, okay, without and with. Yep, slight difference, but really makes it really to me really makes it pop. Cool. Let me try masking the subject. This is not. Gonna, I don't think this is gonna work. But I'm gonna try. If I tell to select the subject, see, I want to see. I want to see if it gives me that tree and see how good of a job it does giving me that tree. Ooh. My sternum just cracked. Yikes. Okay, yep. Really not great, really not worth it. Not that I need to. I was just curious. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm happy with that photo. I think I want to brighten it up a little bit. Let's come back to, back to my main sliders. Bring the highlights up just a touch. Yeah. It makes it more stark. Pull the blacks down just the tiniest bit more. Yeah. Cool. There we go. Three stars. Um, and then if I wanted to do, see what it looks like in black and white now, looks really good. Looks really good in black and white. Um, I think this one looks looks might be a little better in color, but let's do a black and white version just to wrap up. I took these photos in black and white. Let's go ahead and make them in black and white. Same deal here. We're messing with luminance, so the yellows are going to come up. The oranges are going to come. Got to stay where they are. The blues are gonna go down, add some more texture down there. The purples, same thing, not really doing much. Aquas, nah. And then, yeah. They don't really need to do much. I can bring the oranges up a little bit. I wonder what color it thinks the water back there is, which is kind of interesting. Let's bring those highlights up a little bit more on this one. Not enough to lose definition. Are we clipping anywhere? Not yet. Let's go until we clip. There we go. Now we're starting to clip. Let's come back down to about there. Something like that. Slight clipping spots, but I'm not too worried. We're definitely clipping the blacks. Uh, I don't mind. I think it's fine. Uh, yeah, put the whites back. Yeah, I want this to be as much of a silhouette as I can make it. And that looks pretty good. Cool. Three stars as well. All right, come back to just me, and uh, yeah, thank you guys for uh, for joining and being part of this. This was a fun, 
you know, threatened to do this a couple of times and, and do the whole, let's look at my photos uh, as I select them. Um, and uh, I, th I think what's probably going to happen is the next stream I do, which is probably not going to be for a couple of weeks because I'm going to, I'm going to be, uh, going to be away uh, next week. But yeah, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to do a, I'll do another stream. Um, and what I'm probably going to do is just pick up right where I left off. We'll go through the rest of the photos. We'll pick out the ones we like. And then we will come into Lightroom and do some edits. And we and at the end of that, we'll be able to talk about, okay, we started with 360 photographs. We narrowed it down to, you know, 280, give or take, however many we end up with. And then at the very end, we can look at which ones we've edited and which what are kind of our finals and our favorites. So, Yeah. That's that'll be the plan. We'll do we'll do the whole process, start to finish, and we can talk about, you know, the you know the artistic process is, like you know the road to hell is paved with good intentions. The road to art is paved with mistakes. We mess up, we try again, you know, fail again, you know, try fail, fail better, try again, and that's that's how it goes. So, uh, yeah, thank you all for being part of this. Thank you for, uh, thank you Gage for all of your questions. Um, thank you Evelyn for the word photographer. Uh, and thank you, yeah, everyone who joined and everyone who watched. It just made, absolutely, absolutely made my day to be able to share this with you, as it usually does. Uh, as always, um, erichackler.com slash photography if you want to see, uh, you know, more of my work comprehensively. Um, and if you want to order prints or order postcards or anything like that, uh, that's that's the best way to support me and give me the, the resources to keep doing this because it is not an easy profession to be in. Um <laughs> but uh Evelyn and Mia, I'm sorry. I know. It's it's always I always hate seeing when I go to you know full screen with me and I stop looking at photos. I'm still looking at I can still see Lightroom, but I always feel I always hate when it I know that means it's gonna be over. But yep, we'll do more of this. We always will. So uh everyone take care, be safe, be well, create awesome art, and uh yeah, we'll uh do it again soon. See ya.